Hi everyone, Chris Torres here from the Tourism Marketing Agency and welcome to yet another episode of the Digital Tourism Show. In this episode, I have the pleasure of speaking with Patrick O'Shaughnessy of Visit Scotland. Now, Patrick will be discussing challenges that face operators um, pre and post COVID and how operators and other tourism businesses can gain traction online to promote their brand gain direct bookings, but also work with other platforms, travel agencies and OTAs as well. So this is a great episode offering great insight from uh, a DMO in terms of Visit Scotland. So welcome to episode 243 of the Digital Tourism Show. Hi, Patrick. Thank you so much for waiting patiently in the background. I wouldn't say waiting patiently. I've just been running up and down the stairs, switching computers as my um, as I lost connection to you. So you've been very cool. Keep them going. <laughs> no, I yeah, I did actually see you dropping off. And I was going, right, there's another question I can ask just to get, <laughs> get more time. But, and then you've came back on. So <laughs> just to spoil the, the, the magic and the illusion for everyone out there. So. Yeah, well, um, yeah. But no, I appreciate you again, like Chris, no, giving up some of your time to talk today. I get, we were hoping to do this live in front of people. So thank you so much again for doing this online. I really do appreciate it. Um, so for those of us um, who don't know anything about you or, or Visit Scotland, why don't you just give everyone just a brief overview about what you do at Visit Scotland and how, how you help businesses? Uh, okay. Um, I work in the engagement department with Visit Scotland. I'm the industry development manager. Um, my job is supporting businesses with um, advice for business growth. Now, that's pretty much uh, digital advice these days. Mm -hmm. Which is going to be vitally important going forward, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hopefully. And listening so, to Chris, it was, it was like he'd got it all in one go, hadn't he? He's, he's, <laughs> he's really got it and nailed. Yeah, if, if, uh, it's... Like, like I just said there, I know if anyone can start a business maybe just at Christmas time or before and get through COVID and come out the other end, nothing will phase them going forward from, from this point yeah. forward. Really it's, uh, yeah. Um, but what we're going to do first, um, uh, for especially for those who are listening on a podcast later on, we're actually going to, just before we go into the questions, we're going to show a quick sort of three-minute video uh, that Patrick has, has given that even those who are listening on the podcast, it will still make sense because it's obviously got a voiceover over it. Um, but we're going to show a quick video and then we'll jump into the question. So bear with us for the next uh, couple of minutes. Yeah. When someone begins to plan a holiday to Scotland, they could look for information and inspiration in a number of different places. It's important that your business has a presence on a wide variety of channels. That increases your chances of them seeing what you have to offer and booking your service as part of their trip. A customer could use a search engine. They could look up Tours of Dundee, or they could look up your business, Tay Tours. If you want them to find you, then you need to make your website search engine friendly. Use keywords in your content to make sure customers can find you for what you do. Browse social media. They might see a friend's post of their experience at your business. They might look up your business for customer reviews or see an advert on Facebook. If you want them to find you, you need a Facebook business page, Instagram account and Twitter account where you share content about your business and other tourism relevant posts, respond to reviews and generally engage with customers. Follow an influencer. They might follow an influencer who's been on a recent trip to Scotland and created social, video and blog content. If you want them to find you, regional and national organisations often use travel bloggers and influencers to show off their destination. They may get in touch with your business to be a part of the trip, or you might be contacted by an influencer directly. So, consider any offers which may see you provide free services in return for social promotion on their channels. Use online travel agents. They could compare businesses for reviews, cost and location, or read an article on top things to do in Scotland on the OTA website. If you want them to find you, then you need to be listed on OTA websites. Either individually or through a channel manager, your business needs a presence, and you should use it to respond to reviews and update prices and availability. There can also be paid opportunities to feature in article content. Browse visitscotland.com. 
they might read an article about days out in Dundee and click through to your business listing, or search our listings for tours of Dundee. If you want them to find you, then you need to create a Visit Scotland web listing, which is up to date and captures the key features of your services. Decide to book a trip through a tour operator. They might book a pre-organised group trip through their website or use their experience to book a customisable trip just for themselves. If you want them to find you, then you'll need to be set up to accept travel trade bookings. You can get a listing on Visit Scotland's Travel Trade website or speak to your local Visit Scotland Industry Relations Manager for advice. Receive an e-newsletter. They might browse a travel-related email newsletter, click on one of the articles and read more, which gets them thinking, planning and booking a holiday to Scotland. If you want them to find you, set up your website to accept newsletter subscriptions and start emailing your database regularly with updates on your business and ideas for what else to do while they visit you. Browse a regional or sectoral website. They might look up more information on the Outer Hebrides or mountain biking and visit a specific themed website. If you want them to find you, make sure you engage with your regional and sectoral organisations and take up any opportunities they have, such as a web listing, industry newsletter with events and funding opportunities and access to training and advice. Look up things to do near me on their mobile. A visitor might find they have spare time once on holiday and look for activities, attractions or food and drink places near me. If you want them to find you, make sure your website is mobile friendly so they can easily find you and read your content while on the go. You should also claim your Google listing through Google My Business so the opening hours and contact detail information is up to date when displayed through the search engine. It's worth remembering that one user may look in multiple places. So they'll see your business on a search engine, visit your website, sign up for your emails and look at your Facebook page. Think about how your message can work on all of the different channels so the users see a consistent message and really get to know and understand your business. To learn more, visit digitaltourismscotland.com. Thanks for sitting through the video. I hope that I highlighted a few a few things that um, Patrick wants to discuss and give you a bit of good insight into the, the user journeys that people need to take and, and what Patrick advises. So hopefully that was okay for everyone. Um, so Patrick, in the video we, we've seen just how and I heard how important the customer journey is as part of the uh, as part of a business's website and everything else, and to get the, the customers along that journey to make a to basically make a, book, a booking or, or inquire or whatever that would be. But many tourism fo uh, focused businesses in Scotland still don't have any online or adequate online bookings facilities in mind. Uh, so, so in mind, how, how important is this for any tourism businesses? Is 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 a booking a sort of a vital importance these days, or do you still see that that's not quite a, a necessary step at this stage? What, what's your thoughts in terms of how offering? Um, so we're taking it directly in context right now. Um, mm -hmm. but Things aren't happening, but I think what we've got to treat this. Your, I'd like to treat your question just like slightly out of context. In that, sure. before this, when we started, when we did this video, and I'll talk a little bit further as to why we did that video. Um, but before this, we 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 were seeing data, and I think it was fairly for for years that um, the, our visitors were switching to online booking, and that sort of variety of stats was coming through that. Um, travel bookings up to six from 60 to 80 percent of travel bookings have been done online so um, vitally important therefore that Scotland had to be visible in respects of if someone was going to be searching if 68 percent of visitors out there in the world wanted to uh, find and then book online um, uh, their experiences or accommodation then w w it was vital that, that Scottish businesses um, were online bookable Fast forward what we've just gone through, and clearly we've got some um, habits already changing dramatically. And I think one of the things that uh, we're seeing coming through, and all of us will know that, that, even there are segments of people who didn't traditionally buy anything online. And literally over the last two and three months, they've suddenly found they've had to, they've learned how to do it. Mm -hmm. So without doubt, there's a chunk of those people will will have changed habits as well so so that that percentage is going to go up and up and up um 
other bits that's, that makes it even more important, particularly in this, as we go into the phases of where we start coming out of this, is that online bookability can give you tools where you can safely manage come, coming back into business. And what do I mean by that? It's stuff like being able to um, control the volume of people that can come into your business at any given time. So you can start segmenting by time, selling tickets, selling entry, using online bookability. Now, that's going to be so important in terms of giving people the safety and security that they are in a place that they can socially distance because you're managing it. Um, and other simple things like uh, if, uh, online bookable doesn't work unless it's contactless. And, and again, that's another habit that's um, mm -hmm. very much changed in people's mind is they want to have as little as possible. So if you can pay online, that's great. And, and actually, there's a big upside for that as a business right now. That helps cash flow. So um, there's lots of reasons as to why that's that's changed and is even more important. And I think the frightening stat is that we did a bit of a search about a year and a half ago in terms of experienced businesses that were online bookable on our website. And we reckoned just 20% of businesses were online bookable. And when we dug below that, because there was various bits of surveys that said um, an awful lot more were online bookable, but when we asked the question was, um, businesses were considering that if I answer an email that asks, can I book you, they were online bookable. That's not what our visitor wants. They want to be able to click book now, pay, get a confirmation that tells them what time they've booked for, what are the directions that when they arrive they will do, and how do they get around the place, all this sort of nice engagement stuff. That's online bookable as our visitors will want going forward yeah i couldn't agree more i i, I it's such a a massive step especially in this day and age you know you mentioned there more and more people are booking online or doing things online now just simply because of what's happened so you know, i was actually that uh, before or before we went through all these chats i was in another webinar earlier on today um and i, I sort of made the the joke but it is true that my own mother who's um going to be 70 soon is um seven weeks ago or over the last seven weeks has been facetiming everyone or video chatting over whatsapp and that, that would have been laughable seven weeks ago <laughs> so yeah. it's yeah. like the more and more of, of the uh, that generation above are, are creating facebook accounts they're just to stay in touch with family and friends so more and more people are going to be connected online as you say and more and more people are buying online because they simply have to you know online shopping everything else so people are going to get more used to it um, and if they get more used to it people are going to end up expecting that from a lot of the people listening or the tour operators or the yeah, accommodation right. providers that are, are listening to this just now, so for sure. So um, how, how the video that sort of um, we've seen, uh, sorry, how important is it to have uh, your business on as many platforms as uh, as possible, including Visit Scotland? Now, you mentioned in the video there that spreading your, not having all your eggs in one basket and spreading that around. Uh, is an important part of this of the step, uh, and I can come on to a couple of horror stories after after your chat. But, um, yeah. but how is it important as to spread spread your sort of yeah your work it, your, your work around? It's pretty much vital, and I, and I suppose I hope that video doesn't come across patronising. We we try to make it easy to to consume to to work your way through it, and as as sort of in a sense playful as it is there's some real nuggets of of genuine stuff in there that's worth mm. sort of um taking in and it's based on you know a piece of research that we went out and we would normally do sort of vast amounts of research with a lot of people quantitative and qualitative but in 2018 2017 2018 we decided to make a change and we um, did a piece of research which was, which was diary based. So we effectively tracked um, a, a robust number of people and literally asked them to record every single interaction, thought, process that they did in planning a holiday. And we pulled all of that together. And the results of that was fascinating in terms of what it showed is that, um, firstly, and this is like that, that in terms of planning is something that's always in the in a person's process. It's not about I need to book linear and um, where will I go? Boom, 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 boom. That tends to be at the end of a planning process. And actually, 
on an ongoing basis, people are constantly thinking about holidays or being inspired mm. or being given new ideas or looking at ideas and saying that works or that doesn't work, adding it to something else. So um, it's it's actually about hundreds, if not thousands of interactions on online all the time that people utilize. So that's one big piece. And it's, and it's about then, and what that then meant was that um, in order for us, you, the businesses, to influence those those sort of times and situations, you needed to be in as many of the channels as is, is possible. Um, mm -hmm. Doing it as well as possible, doing it and answering the questions for those people at the right time, at the right place, and um, with the right content. So it's, it is a big ask, but... Um, so therefore, it does need that you are that you are actually displaying your businesses in as many of those platforms as possible. And actually, listening to Chris uh, before this, he actually gets it. He was talking about three hundred hours on his website to make sure it was right. He was talking about how building content was what he spent his time on, and how he was um, on social, engaging. I and mean, it's that is exactly what um, that that video is about. So it was mm. it was. It was quite encouraging to hear. Um, yeah, it's, it. yeah. As, as I said in the, in the chat with Chris, it's becoming that media company. It's getting your. You have yeah. to have all those different touch points that you have to get out these days, and that, this is what you need to do to survive um, in today's market. Unfortunately, it's, there's, no, there's no quick fix anymore, uh, as they say. Absolutely, and it's what we 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 sort of use the term of being discoverable, and it's it's. In order to be unearthed, you really need to be, yes, you need to be bookable, but that's at the end of the spectrum of when people say, okay, I'm ready to spend my pounds, but it's much more before that, that, you're, mm -hmm. that you need to have that presence in terms of your website, in terms of your social, that you are managing your reputation, which actually after this phase is going to be even more important because mm -hmm. imagine if you're not getting well rated for cleanliness, uh, it, on yeah. on any of your reputation, how important is that? Maybe before it was less so. Now it's going to be really, really important in the next sort of month or so. So all of these things are you need to pay attention. I think the question then people ask is, well, how am I able to spread myself over all of these things? So yes, the argument is still you need to do things well, but I suppose the starting point is understanding who your target audience is. Once you know that. You can start saying, well, they are on Facebook or they are on Instagram, so I'll pay some attention and I will do it really well and I will do it regularly and I will do it in the times that people are consuming. And likewise with your with your content on on uh, on your website, that you're doing it targeted to the audience that you know is right for your product. No, exactly true. And, and, and go a, a step further than that. that. What tends to happen is, is people who do a lot of stuff on social media and things like that, will fall into the trap of, of using a scheduler and post the same content across multiple different platforms. Whereas mm -hmm. for some of the cases, those platforms need specific content for the demographics that someone who is watching something or looking at something on Instagram isn't necessarily going to be inspired by the same thing on Facebook and vice versa. It's, it's making sure you adapt your content for each one of those channels. And again, it's a lot of work, but that's ultimately what gets you better recognition and builds your brand up quicker uh, and better, in my opinion. Um, with, with the advent of COVID, I can't get away from this question, unfortunately. Uh, with the advent of COVID, uh, what is the advice that you would give tourism businesses just now? Um, what website or marketing elements should they be focusing on if they, if they had to pick a few at the moment? What, what should they be doing at the moment? I mean, just I'll take it back just one step from that in terms mm -hmm. of in terms of the advice piece. One of the things we did as soon as COVID came out was that we we um, we used every relationship we possibly could have to surface data around what the situation was around the world within scotland within, within everything um within every source whether that's our own website whether that was using um sentiment monitor that we that we utilize whether that's we also use adara if you're familiar with it we also reached out to all the big um travel platforms asking them would they be happy to share their data with us in terms of what people were searching for for Scotland from um, internationally or in the UK. Um, we talked to as many people as possible. We have people in markets across the world who are gathering um, information about what was happening on, on the ground. 
what information could we possibly uh, have that would be useful? And one of the one of the strong and really encouraging pieces that came across was that people were really disappointed that it, they couldn't come to Scotland. People were still committed to come to Scotland. So that's mm -hmm. what I would say to you as a starting point to that question is there is real hope. People see Scotland as a really um, strong holiday proposition going forward as soon as these um, restrictions start to lift and when it's safe to come to here. That Scotland with its open spaces, its fresh air and the connotations with wellness is really, really well positioned um, to, to, be, to be ready to, to take advantage of the opportunity. So that's a really, really strong thing. So, and then in terms of where and how you spend your time, um, just going back to that uh, discoverable element. So it's, you know, without doubt, the most um, cost effective thing is direct to, to, mm -hmm. to, to you. So we, that video touches on that in terms of whether it's on your web website, whether it's your social media, whether it is through your email and your database. And, and it's, it's, it's going back and checking the fundamentals are right in those in that perspective. It's, it's interesting. Um, whenever we do a lot of, of outreach to businesses and we say to them, look, just um, come along to, in, in, in the good old days, come along to our workshops, listen, we'll, we'll go over the basics. You may consider yourself to be a mature in terms of digital, in terms of your knowledge, but I will bet that we will kick out maybe one or two little nuggets that you can go back and fix when you get back to your business. And that's, and it is amazing that that is the truth. And these are sort of big businesses to one man bands that we, with that we, we, we do this. And we're going to do some of that online in the next few weeks. So watch out for that. Um, and it's, so to me, it's about just take that time right now. And I know it's really, really tough, but take the time now to have a look at all the things, even simple things like, making sure that your Google My Business Knowledge Graph is verified. Um, I Terrifyingly, I was talking to, to Google um, about eight months ago, and they said that 50% of tourism businesses in Scotland have not verified their Google Knowledge Graph. Now, that in itself is a very simple thing to do. Mm. It's one of those things that when we've asked businesses, they say, well, I might get spammed because of it, or I'm a little bit scared of doing something with Google that they'll start um, spying. So there, there is no real logic other than it's a simple thing to get fixed. And even now, it's a, there is one thing you should be doing is, is sort of adding your, if you are temporarily closed, add that. You've got opportunities to add messages in there if you're doing any events, anything that keeps, even if it is virtual reality, I know your thoughts on that in that respect, but if you're doing that as an awareness piece, then that's mm -hmm. a little bit. So so the direct stuff, checking everything. And then it's about the referral stuff. So there's reference about our listings. Those are free. Um, then make sure you use it. And make sure, not only do you use it, but get your images updated. Get your text, look at it, get freshen it up, have a new perspective on it. Um, same with any of your other referral sites so have a little quick look at analytics if you don't use it a lot one of the nice just go into referrals and give you a list of your top 10 sites that refer to you before this um break this uh, episode is covid um and just go and look at them and, and get everything in there as sharp and as right as, as possible and then and this is maybe something that's it's it's it can be quite tricky but online travel agents it will have a role it's not right for everybody, but it is something you should consider. If you know your cost of sales and you know that normally you've got a bit of inventory left at any given day, month, or week, um, then you should be considering online travel agent as another way, as a balanced way. I still come back mm -hmm. to direct is still best. But online travel agents, once they don't cannibalize your business as it was or is going to be in the future, then do have a look at it, but manage mm -hmm. it negotiate it, make sure that the terms and conditions are right for what you want and you're reaching out to new audience. So those are the, the sort of three things I would I would look at right now. Yeah, Along amazing, that, amazing. Yeah, your hope. Sorry. yeah it's, 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 it's great advice. And um, on, on the OTA thing, I completely agree. Um, it's, I see OTAs as another, nothing more than another marketing channel. It's another way of trying to get your product out there. But unfortunately, a lot of operators just fall into the trap of relying on that too heavily. Uh, and I know we spoke before we had this chat about 
some businesses I've spoken to are 100 percent reliant and believe me, there are plenty of them out there 100 percent reliant on OTAs, which through this time they are that's going to hit them hard at the moment. So it's spreading, as you say, in the, as the video shows, spreading your your eggs around as many places as possible, um, and and using OTAs to a certain extent, but don't let it affect your direct channels and or overtake your direct channels you know, as, as much as possible. Um, so do you do you see uh, uh, obviously with things happening with post COVID um, with internationals uh, flights and. 14 day quarantines and all these other things that are happening at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm advising a lot of people and a lot of our customers that for at least the next six to 12 months, domestic is where it's going to be at. Is that what you guys are seeing as well? Do you think domestic is the focus that a lot of businesses should be taking going forward at the moment? Yeah, and I, you know, the, without doubt, international um, business is, is not going to come back um, as quickly as we would like. Um, it probably is, is unlikely to come back for this season. Although, mm-hmm. Once again, our our team who who are out in destination and it, they, what they're getting is is um, the intermediaries and the wholesalers coming to them and saying, we still see Scotland as a very very viable product. Um, we want to start building product for 2021. So back to that demand, it's it's there and it will come back when it is safe, when when it when it's right to travel. But in the meantime, you're absolutely right. Um, there will be a phase of return, and the as we see, and, we're, and again, we're, we're going to be doing um, some some education webinars. Watch out for them on visitscotland.org, um, where we will look at sort of four phases from a domestic perspective. The first one is quite encouraging from an experience perspective. It's about day trips. It's when the Scots are able to go out and start enjoying their country again. So that um, we see that happening. First, um, we don't have an exact date or time, but we're planning yeah. for that. And um, then um, there's um, we will have the the, the uh, Scott staycation coming kicking in. So again, the, our, our, where they'll be able to stay away at nights and want to do stuff, um, and, and without doubt, they'll they'll perhaps not want to stay without knowing can they do something in in that area. So these are these are areas and, and opportunities that that people should tap into. There is the UK market, and and um, that's if you think about it, Scotland's market share uh, was eighty percent, over eighty percent UK. So we're already really, really strong. We know there's mm. a a lot of people who love Scotland, and um, and it's they're you know eighty percent in volume and value. So 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 critically yeah. important. And then there's um, the one that perhaps you might not think of, but um, Republic of Ireland. Ireland is is going to be. Um, probably a, a much quicker to return, won't have the international restrictions uh, as, as we see it that other countries will have. So so, so there's, there are four markets that we should be thinking about and repurposing our product because uh, interestingly, when, or if you're so used to focusing towards an international market, quite often your product isn't quite ready for mm-hmm. a domestic market that um family units might be you know i was given an example recently and it's not for this where accommodation if a family of five went to stay in a hotel for five days in scotland they could just as easily stay in the maldives so it's yep. you know those the, the the room set up or the, the 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 way food is part of the package it's all of these things that we need to reconsider exactly how um our product is set up so that it is it is right for um the the uk market and you must remember as well that in terms of spend they you know part of the southeast is 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 probably the most wealthy market that it is out there so luxury is still there as an opportunity as yeah well. completely agree uh, some great advice patrick um i can see a couple of questions coming in um, one is actually on the Travel Massive website, which I can't put up on the screen, but it's from, it was actually a couple, um, it's from Sean Rice, does Scotland, I don't know if this is something you can answer, but does Scotland plan to launch a COVID-19 hygiene stroke safety certification to reassure travellers, like Portugal has a clean and safe stamp or somewhere in Spain? Do you think that's something we're going to have I implemented think, here? Yes, it's, I think it's, there's, there are a lot of conversations that's been dealt with at Scottish government level. We've mm-hmm. got a and uh, uh, the um, Scottish Tourism Emergency, I don't know what the R stands for, group, I can't, it's what we call it, but it's, it's there is a subgroup within that which is looking at um, that, that sort of cleanliness. 
how do we make sure that our visitor has a confidence in it? So there's there has been a publication. Uh, prima, the, the main one is the UK hospitality. There is people sort of clamoring for a kite mark. What we've got to understand, though, is it's got to be safe, but also the consumer's got to understand what the kite mark stands for. And that takes a lot to get that education across. I suppose yeah. fundamentally what's important is that we're able to um, reassure, and this is back to that piece of it, that, that your business is properly set up, that you're giving messages out to say you're ta you've taken COVID seriously, that you're putting things in place that keeps people safe. And the messaging is probably the significant, most important part of all of this. But yes, it is something that's been considered and will be sort of very shortly uh, published so that uh, that industry can get behind us. Excellent, excellent. And I actually see another one on Travel Massive. Not really a question, but it's, I don't know if it's a relation, Kevin O'Shaughnessy from Dublin says, no. uh, oh, uh, he, he runs Travel Massive Dublin. He says, we need to connect together at some point, Patrick. So there you go. Absolutely. You've got a, a brother from another mother over an island somewhere. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I've got one more uh, question I see. It's from Yerkin. Um, let's see if this is something we can answer. Can you evaluate, it's quite a big question, can you evaluate the Tour in Scotland 2020 strategy accomplishments and how 2030 strategy might change after COVID in general and in digital marketing points of view? I don't know if I've got time to answer that <laughs> question. Is there, it is a big one. <laughs> and I think Chris uh, touched on it, is that the, the, the visitor is interested in stories and storytelling, and it's something that Scotland is extremely strong at doing, so it's a big... The person, the, the people side of things, the, how authentic it can be. So it, it, it is about sort of putting across the stories, the really, really strong stories that exist in Scotland. That, you know, that, that is, that's been weaved through all of our marketing strategies going forward um, and will continue to, to be so. So that's mm -hmm. that be a very simplistic answer, but... <laughs> That's another topic entirely, entirely yeah. I think, for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple more um, on the uh, Travel Massive website. One from Ian, um, who's the owner of Travel Massive, is how much uh, COVID-19 messaging is too much for tour operators? Any best practices and examples? Um, Do you think we talk about it too much? Or? I think, well, we, we, right now we're in lockdown, so we're, so it's really, it's really um, in front of mind. Uh, I think it's maybe you know, it's thinking about his content going forward. So that should there be something you you create a lot in terms of your marketing, or should you try and make your marketing more evergreen, as it were, or, or it should you should you only mark, uh, mention COVID to a certain extent and then sort of forget about it after that point? I think it's back to that reassurance. It's about making mm -hmm. sure that that what you and and it's about the phases. So without doubt, Scotland is is seen as as a safe, secure, uh, wide open place to come to. So. There, there is that perception. So it's, it's been also been able to put across that you as a singular business is, is taking it seriously and whether that, you know, and putting things in place that looks after people. So I think once beyond that, then you, I suppose you need to deliver that as well. You know, it's just like anything you over promise and under deliver, then you're in real trouble. And, in the, you know, um, reputation will quickly catch you up in that respect. So in answer to that question, I suppose you're looking to reassure, and then it's about the experience, and it's 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 to me as you as you quite rightly said, um, it's a it's you know evergreen content ultimately is is the core of what what delivers for you. Yeah, yeah. I've got one last question before we, we let you go. Um, is from Peter Charles. Um, it's quite a big question. It's on again on travel massive. Um, but so, in summary, do you think the, the recently high profile loss of Sc Scottish coach operators uh, and some of the other associated hotels will put people um, off booking in the future? Uh, and do you think there's a risk that with tour operators going under, etc., um, we might not even have enough people to accommodate the capacity? So do you see that being an issue as well going forward? It, there's no doubt it'll be challenging, and and it's that's been the awful uh, pieces of the last couple of months is listening to when you're looking to help businesses and trying to sort them and fe feeling powerless that you can't do anything uh, for them. Uh, the the you know our, our chief executive regularly says there's one thing about tourism the 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 businesses are very resilient and y you can see that already. I think. Unfortunately, um, some good some good businesses even even are going to not be able to open up again. 
Um, but we're we're very hopeful for in terms of the demand we see. We're very hopeful in terms of that resilience of businesses being being there and li listening and talking to people because we've we've made thousands and received thousands of calls. Um, there, the, I I have a real confidence that we can bounce back um, quite quickly. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. I think we will. I think we will. Um, I actually noticed one there for quite like just from Frank. Um, he says um, the focus at the moment obviously seems to be I think it's about open spaces and rural visits. Is there going to be any campaigns in terms of trying to create higher volumes for city breaks and things like that as well within Scotland? I think even even um, when we talk about open spaces and, and green, actually again Scotland is very blessed that that our many of our cities have lots of green spaces. Think of Glasgow in, in terms of how how they used to be known. So we're going to be looking at that. We'll we'll utilise that as as um, a big part and then the other part is how we one of the big advantages of scotland cities is how quickly and easy you can get into the countryside you're not stuck for hours mm -hmm. uh, in traffic you can very very quickly get out and see some amazing countryside mm -hmm. yeah that's what i love about um living in scotland especially glasgow it's you now where i live um sort of further away from the west ends uh, of glasgow is 10 minute drive, 50 minute drive from where I live. I'm literally at Loch Lomond or further. It's incredible. You can just quickly drive out that way and just go for a, go for a, take the kids and run about with the dog and everything else. It's amazing. It's really, it's, it's an amazing place to stay. It really is. Yeah. Well, Patrick, I can't thank you enough for your time. Um, I hope everyone has some great insights from this uh, and I can't thank you enough. So thank you. I hope uh, if anyone wants to know more about yourself, visit Scotland, or if there's anything uh, they want to know further, where would they where would they find out that out from you? I think the best place is we we've got visitscotland.org is our industry face, facing site. All our all our contact details are in there. There's lots of really good stuff. We've just added a ton of new content from a digital skills perspective for you to have a look at. And as I said um, a few times, we've got a. We've got a series of webinars now, probably every Thursday until July 16th, with one or two gaps. Um, that's there to help and support uh, the tourism businesses um, get back. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And uh, anyone who's listening, watching, take away anything you can do to learn your uh, up your skill sets, learn how you can create more bookings going forward. You know, past COVID. Well, you guys are, are producing this sort of content, so it's it's a must watch, and I must uh, I must I would, I'd urge everyone to sign up for them. I really would. Great. So, thank you. Um, Patrick, thanks again. Not at uh, all. Uh, Pleasure. We could do, hopefully we could do this live at some point. Indeed, yes, it would be nice. Get, get out of the attic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been, I feel like I've been stuck in my bedroom for the last eight weeks, and I'm sick of the sale. But to be honest, <laughs> but, uh, but no, whatever happens, though, stay safe, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up soon. Likewise. Take care and thanks for the opportunity to talk to you.